Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to John Worthen Arena here on this beautiful evening for Ball State Volleyball action. Ball State Cardinals are here and they are hosting the Quincy Hawks in a key MEVA matchup. I'm Bill Davis here along with Dina Madison. Ball State of course 9-4 and four in conference play. They are of course led by Matt Denmark, Tom Teganoff, Paul Fashauer, a very strong offensive front. This is a very strong offensive team and Quincy's going to have to really be on their toes, and they're really going to have to step up the defense. Ball State has been on fire. They've won seven of their last eight. And as I said, Ball State's really been on fire, Linus. That's right. The last couple of games, they've won the last eight out of the ten games, and uh, it's coming down to the end of the season where it matters the most when you're going into the conference play. And they're led by a couple of key guys. Uh, the quarterback, Keith Shunzel, he's uh, running the whole offensive scheme for them so it's real important for them to win tonight against the Quincy Hawks. Now last night Ball State of course they played Loyola right here in the arena. I mentioned Tom Taganoff he led the team with 11 kills okay including a key kill late in the fourth game that won it for them. Uh, also Matt Denmark he had 11 kills and he led the team with a 409 hitting. This again uh, Move Ball State up to 9-4 and four in conference play. Tied them for second. There's a three-way tie for second right now, along with Loyola and Ohio State. Right, and at the same time last night, Quincy was up in Fort Wayne playing IPFW, and they lost three straight there, a key, key loss that they had. So tonight's a very important match for Quincy to win because this is their last conference game that they have. Exactly. Now, we've got some keys to the game here for Ball State and Quincy. Linus, what do you think Ball State has to do to win this game? There are a couple of important things that they have to do. Number one is they have to shut down number seven, Rob Steincooler. He has been Quincy's offensive power. It's a majority of the sets. So the key thing is they have to make sure that they can block him well, dig a lot of balls, and hopefully that would be one key thing. The next key thing is they have to pass well. If Ball State wants to run a good and steady, consistent offense, they got to pass the ball up to the net so Keith Shunzel can run the offense. Now, Quincy, of course, is 9-6 and six there in solo possession of fifth place in the conference. What do they have to do to beat Ball State? And at the same time, there, this is a very important game for them. The first thing that they have to do is they have to play really good defense. Uh, the way Ball State's been playing lately, Ball State's offense has been real strong. So if Quincy can come out, play some good defense, block some balls, dig some balls, then they might have a good chance of winning this match. And the last thing that they have to do is they, this is really a big motivation for them because this is the last conference match that they have. And if they win or lose, depending on what the outcome is tonight, that's going to set the tone where they're going to be in the conference standings. Certainly a loss will knock them down to nine and seven and more than likely for all intents and purposes, no better than fifth. They do want to host a quarterfinal game and you have to be in the top four to do that. We've got plenty of action coming up here. It's Ball State taking on Quincy. We're going to take a timeout and then we'll come right back right here on WCRH Sports. Through Ball State University School of Continuing Education and Public Service, we have everything you need to complete your studies without leaving your community. Our distance education program offers live satellite, online, or face-to-face -face courses offered at local high schools throughout the state. So call us or take a look at us on the web because Ball State University has everything you need. Okay class, tomorrow night is college night. Think about your needs. I need a well-respected degree. To explore. I need a ticket to the world. Ball State University, everything you need. Ball State Sports Online. 
Schedule. Result. Headline. Features. Statistic. Game note. Team pages. Video and audio clip. Biography. Email. Ball State link. Daily updates. Your only online source for all the latest in Ball State sports. www.bsu.edu slash sports. Okay, class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need to express my creativity. I need help paying for college. I need activities outside of class. Ball State University, everything you need. Welcome back to Ball State Volleyball Action. The Ball State Cardinals hosting the Quincy Hawks in this key matchup in the Midwest Intercollegiate Volleyball Association. We're getting ourselves ready for the lineups, as well as the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's match with Quincy marks the final regular season home match of the 2001 season and in the career of Ball State senior Brian Winchester. As the program continues for Winchester, we're getting ourselves ready for the lineups and ready for the game. What do you think? What do you think Ball State's chances in this ball game? I think they're going to do really well. They've been they've been playing real well the last half of the season. Uh, they've won they've won last eight of the ten games. So I think this is going to be a very good match. I think Ball State will come out fired up. This is, their, this is their last home match, so they sort of have to take advantage of that too. We didn't mention Doug Market, by the oh, way, at the nice opening of the game. Doug Market, the leading Quincy. server for the club, and he's somebody that Quincy has to keep in mind. And your own Ball State As we get Quincy ready here for the Cardinal. opening lineups for this match, the last home and matchup for MIVA, in their MIVA conference, rather. As we get ready for the national anthem. State University in second place as we get ready for the starting lineups here for Quincy. From Brazil, number one, Fernando Bahedo. A from Germany, number three, Felix Mann. A senior from St. Louis, number seven, Rob Steinkuhler. A 16 junior from Lake Mia, Illinois, number two. Rob Steinkuhler, of course, is the man that Ball State has to watch out for. He's kind of Mr. Everything for Quincy. Number seven. Yeah, Rob Steinkuhler. Couple of, couple of, couple of freshmen are starting for um, Quincy as well. 
This is a very young squad. This is a squad that really this is more of a transition year for them. They think in the next year or two, Quincy is going to make a major run at the MEVA championship. We'd like to give a special welcome to those of you on WBSU on Channel 5 for joining us in this special triple cast. Bill Davis along with Dinus Madison. As you are watching the starting lineup for the Ball State Cardinals, as they take on the Quincy Hawks right here in the last home game for the Midwest Intercollegiate Volleyball Association for Ball State. Ball State, of course, 9-4. and four. Tied for second place along with Loyola and Ohio State. Lewis is 14 and 1. Lewis is already the runaway winner in the conference. They will get the number one seed in the tournament. Ball State, of course, fighting to get in the top four so that they can host a quarterfinal matchup in the Neva tournament. And as you brought up at the top of the show, Quincy has an awful lot to gain in, in this match and a whole lot more to lose. They lose this one, they drop to 9 and 7. And for all intents and purposes, that keeps them out of the top four. That's right. They want to make sure this is their last conference match. So this is sort of do or die situation for them. But uh, Ball State, they still have two more conference games after this. So this would be a very big win for Ball. This is a very big win for Ball State, but for Quincy, even bigger. Tim Koth, we got a shot of him there. He is in his fifth year coaching for Quincy. He coaches both the men's and the women's teams. We saw Joe Walton earlier. Joe Walton, 44 and 37 overall in his third season as head coach for the Cardinals. As we get ourselves set. And we're all ready to go here as Quincy will get the opening serve. It'll be the, the freshman Felix Mann who will be serving here initially. So how do you think Ball State looked uh, as they were warming up? How do you feel for the match tonight, Bill? They are certainly on fire, and they're a very athletic squad, and I, I have high hopes for them here tonight. Nice block. Sends it outside, and just a little miscommunication there. First point goes to Quincy. Looked like Denmark and Tegadoff. Yeah, just a little miscommunication. The, the you take it, I have it. And it looked like a... Oh, and we have a call now for out of rotation. Uh, Keith Shunzel, the setter, was out of rotation on that one right before they served. So down ref called them for that. Call you see a lot early on, these matchups, as they're all getting set. There's the big kill, Matt Denmark. Denmark with his first play of the evening. Denmark. And it is two to one Quincy. And now we'll see what Quincy's gonna do with their offensive scheme if they're gonna go back to number seven, Rob Steinkohler. He gets the first set and he gets house. Nice that, block. Was a, that was a big block up there. Paul Fassauer was there on the play. Back to live action here with Matt Denmark. Good defensive nice play save. by Denmark. Oh. Nice save. But Kyle Windell with the shot there. And it goes back to Quincy. Quincy takes the 3 2 lead. That service with Daniel Runa. Spike goes out of bounds. Tom Teganoff trying to spike it, and it goes out of bounds, and it's a point for Quincy. Nice block. Another chance. And a cut goes out of bounds. Beautiful big block by by Fast Sauer and Doug Market. They're just up there penetrating over the net. Big block. Now it's Doug Market back to serve. He's the, he's the guy who leads the team in the aces for Ball State. Got a really good jump serve. There goes Steinkuhler. Steinkuhler with another kill. That's her, nice kill. That's her main guy there. 
Frank Curtis, the guy to watch out for. Paul Johnson now back to serve for Quincy. Oh, and serves it directly into the net. Comes back to Ball State, down 5-4 here. Tom Tegetoff here for the serve. And that ball goes out of bounds. It's another point for Quincy. They were unable to block that. Yeah, just a nice big high drive shot off that and just went off the hands and defensive player couldn't get it. Just out of reach. And there's Paul Fassauer with a great, great hit. Boy, Fassauer is making his presence felt early on as he's back to serve. Fassauer is currently number one with uh, the kills for Ball State. He has 239 for the season. And he is definitely important to this Ball State offense. And another nice shot. Another point for Ball State. Quincy was in the net. Nice shot. You know, it looks, looks a little bit like up front that Quincy might just be a little intimidated, particularly with uh, Fassauer and Tegadoff up front. And that serve goes directly into the net. It's a point for Quincy. Quincy reclaims the serve. Trzinski with the serve. Big jump serve there, pass real well. And nice shot, nice shot by Matt Denmark. Taking control there and taking serve back. It's Keith Shunzel there with the serve. Look out. Another great block. Oh, and what a shot by Delgado. Way to elevate above the net. Delgado is quick. He's from Puerto Rico. He's a great offensive threat for Ball State on the outside. And there was a replay. You saw Delgado with the kill. Back to live action as that shot goes out of bounds. Daniel Runa. That goes out of bounds. Another point for Ball State. Once again, Shunzo on the serve. And there's Stein Cooler again. Stein Cooler, and it goes out of bounds. Another error. You know, Stein Cooler, he is their big guy, but last night against uh, Fort Wayne, he played terrible. He ended up with 12 kills, 12 errors, and uh, he hit 0%. So if uh, Quincy wants a chance, if they want to win tonight, they got to really make sure Stein Cooler's in, and he's playing really well. But my feeling is if he's not playing well, then Quincy's chances of winning are really limited. This is not the road weekend, certainly, that they wanted out of him. Right. And there's a nice spike and point for Quincy as they once again take serve. I mean, Stein Cooler for the year, he has over 450 kills, and the next guy down on the team is 200. So you could see that he has over, he has a lot of kills for the team. So tough serve. Nice shot by Tegadoff to put it over the net. Stein Cooler and a nice block. What a big block. The combination of Doug Markin and Matt Denmark there. And there's another error by Stein Cooler, so we'll see how this match keeps progressing. And Delgado back to serve. Jump. And that one's long. As another Carol, hit. Excuse me, as Paul Johnson serves it long. Another hitting error by Quincy. Looks like Quincy's a little tentative right now. They're. Uh, you know, they're hitting some balls out of bounds, getting blocked. They're, they're, they don't have that feeling yet. Well, they're obviously outsized, as you can see. They need to rely on quickness. They really, really need to rely on just like that. Daniel Runa with the nice shot, nice kill. They need to rely on quickness, and they need to get it around. Felix Mann, the freshman. There's, There's a good kill. Denmark hitting down the line. Good market has really stepped up in the last few matches as well. One of the team leaders in kills. Big service. That one's out. Another point for Ball State. Looks like Stein is just a little cold tonight. He's he's not taking the full approaches. He's. Uh, you know, I think he has, what, three hitting errors so far for the game, and we're, we're not even halfway through the game. 
Well, as we said, this is just the wrong time for him to go cold. Yeah. I mean, they, they need the win so that they can get themselves in the top four, and they need him to step up. Right. Well, this is their last conference game, so, you know, this is the last thing Quincy wants to do is go into the tank early and just blow the game. And we got ourselves a timeout here as momentum definitely in the Cardinals' favor. It's 15 to 9. Another big error by Quincy, and they're just committing errors left and right here, and they've, they've allowed the Cardinals to seize momentum of this game. We talked a little bit about how important this is for Quincy. For Ball State, this is very important as well. Ball State, Loyola, and Ohio State, all three are tied at 9-4 and four in the conference, all tied at second place. Loyola is off tonight. Ohio State travels to Mercyhurst, so they've got themselves an excellent opportunity to jump into second. Ball State with a win here would, jump, would tie Ohio State for second, provided both teams win, and Ball State would win any tiebreaker, so they would get the second seed. Right, it's coming down to the end with these three teams tied. It's real crucial that you win each conference match with Ball State having this one, and then they have two away next weekend. And like always, it's harder to win on the road, so they have to take advantage of this opportunity tonight to beat Quincy. Matt Denmark back to serve. I love his serving style. One of the most powerful serves in the entire league. And another error. The setter was in the net. Big jump serve by Denmark. Made the pass a little tight. Setter touched the net. Makes it 16-9 ball state. And that one's long. Miss hit on the serve, no problem. Happens once in a while. The high thing problem with uh, jump serving is that high errors. But at the same time, if you have a really good jump serve, you get a lot of aces. Bruno with the serve, oh. and that one's blocked right back. It's a nice try by Marka, but that was blocked right back at him. One of the more unusual serving styles right here by Daniel Runa. This is sort of what you call a jump float serve. Uh, it's usually the jump serves have top spin. This one, it puts a little float serve on it. Ball, sort of like a knuckleball in baseball. When you throw that knuckleball, it sort of floats around. Ball State was able to defend that one. They got the point thanks to a take it off kill. Back to service market. And market serves it into the net. Ball goes back to Quincy. Still a five point lead though for Ball State here in the first. And that one's long. That was close to the line, but they, they called it long. Makes it 18 to 12 and take it off back to serve. Good set. Zephant, easy State dig by Hall. And killed by Delgado. That was, a, that was a great block. They got a big block up there, got a deflection. It was easy for Josh Hall to make a dig and gave Ball State the chance to run their offense and, and terminate for a kill. Another dig Another by nice Teggy. Dig. And into the net is the call. No, that's not the call. Yeah, hitting error. It is in the, it is in the call. Yeah, hitting okay. error by, by Doug Market. Ball goes over to Quincy once more. This is number seven. Stein Cooler. Big serve, big ace. Mark that one down. That, that won't be the, the last time you see that tonight. Uh, he's a real, real powerful jump serve he has, and and it comes so quick that you have to you have Ooh. to react. Either you're there or you're not. You give Delgado credit for digging that one out. Stein Cooler comes in again. Nice dig by Hall. The point goes to Ball State. Great dig and great transition right there with Shunzel setting fast hour. Fast hour with the serve. Here comes Steinkuller again. There's a big kill by Steinkuller. Big kill by Steinkuller. That was a nice try by Delgado that time. Just a little too strong. Quincy trying to rally here. Big jump serve there. Little combination. Delgado hits it long. 
Or no, he does not. It's in. Great shot by Delgado. They're running a little combination up front. Blocker guessed on the wrong attacker. Delgado put it back into the corner. Great shot there. 21 to 15. Nice dig by Tegadoff. Delgado with another chance for kill. Tips it gets picked up. Here comes Stein Cooler. Another nice defensive play by Ball State. And nice play. There was Delgado way to elevate, hitting over the block. Ball State's, Ball State's digging the ball really well tonight. They're getting some really good deflections off the block, which makes it a lot easier to dig the ball. And they're into the net. Double contact, double, I believe it's the call. Double contact right on the setter. And another timeout as Ball State now has their largest lead so far, 23 to 15. Looks like Ball State sort of doing the things that they uh, wanted to do for the game. They're, they're blocking well, or at least they're getting really good deflections. Makes it a lot easier in the backcourt to dig the ball. And once Ball State digs the ball, they have really good, really good opportunities to kill for points. That was an excellent shot right there. Of take it off, getting the big point. And as you said, this is this is something Ball State has done an awful lot of so far this season. They've come out really hot. They've come out. They they've done really well in their first game. Usually winning their first game. It's their third game that they've had trouble with. Last night they had trouble with their third games. We take a look at another replay here. There's Yari Delgado hitting over the block, getting the kill for that last point. Yeah, just like you said. It's sort of after you win the first two games, the third game is sort of a little lull. You think that the other team's gonna sort of roll over and, and a lot of times what happens is in the third game, you sort of step down also and you're not playing as, as you were before. That's why a lot of times teams lose a third game. Stein Cooler with a nice, nice shot and it can't be saved. Stein, long. Wow, Stein Cooler unloaded on that one. Shunzel got his dug that up, but couldn't run it down. A lot of heat coming from that guy. Fernando Barreto here with the serve. Another jump serve here. Nice set. And a beautiful kill. Daniel Runa with another kill. I'll tell you, he's really stepped up in Steinkohler's play so far tonight. Definitely. Looks like Steinkohler's just, uh, it looks like he's starting to warm up now, but yes, definitely Daniel Roon has been, been the guy right now. Beretta with another serve, powerful serve. Ball with the shot. Delgado tried to float it over. A dig by Steinkohler. Steinkohler hits it long. Point for Ball State. And another error for Steinkohler. Steinkohler got a good dig there. He picked up the easy dig and then he just hit it out of bounds. Now Stelgato with the serve. Ball stayed up 24-17. Oh, beautiful dig. Good block. And could not be rescued. Terminated by Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson, the big guy in the middle. As Felix Mann, back for the serve. Oh, a little floater there by Tegadoff. Tegadoff with a kill, good placement. The set was a little tight. He couldn't really swing at the ball, so he sort of just dinked it over. Saw the open court. And now coming in, Juan Carlos Lopez making his first appearance here of the match. Yeah, he's a back row specialist that comes in. Um, he's from... Puerto Rico. Last year he was the libero. Having a little trouble with some jewelry. Looks like he has something on his wrist, some kind of band. Oh, yeah. You never know how, <laughs> how strict they are with the rules these days. Oh, exactly. You know, you can't take anything for granted here. A little floating serve by Lopez. Oh. And a big kill. Big miscommunication between Lopez and Tegadoff. It was a really good block, got a good deflection. It should have been dug. That happens a lot, though, when you bring a guy in for the first time. Daniel Runa back for the serve. Jump float again. 
Yeah. Nice setup and a nice kill by Paul Fassauer. Fassauer's been playing real well lately. They uh, changed him up. He's in the middle usually, but the last couple games, uh, they put him, Joel Walton, put him on the outside to change things up. And uh, Paul's a very versatile player. He could pretty much play any position. Nice dig by Delgado, knocks it over. And that one could not be saved. Nice try by Josh Hall, but that was just a little too powerful. And we've got another substitution coming in for the serve. It's number eight, another freshman. That's Jim Fight. And Delgado hits it long. Yeah, they were running a combination play there, having Delgado come from the back row. Looks like he just mishit it. Just a little, little outside. And a service into the net. Big service error right there. That's one thing you don't want to do. It's 27-21 right now. You're going to 30. Last thing you want to do is just give some points over to Ball State. They could hopefully end this, wrap this game up. Take it off, gets a couple of serves. That's exactly what could happen. And they're calling that it was a successful block. Big block by Yari Delgado. Awful close to being in the net, but the ref was right there and he made the call. Even though Yari isn't as tall as Steinkohler as the other guys on the team, Yari, very, very big leaper. And that one is long by Barreto. And here's a game point now for Ball State up 29 to 21. Fans are on their feet. And couldn't be saved, could not be blocked. Size nice hit by Trzinski. High drive shot just out of the reach of take it off. Now Rob Stein cooler, the dominator, back to serve. There's a setup, and that's beautiful job. There's a kill, and that's and the end Fassar. of the game. Paul Fassar and Ball State takes game one, 30 to 22. Fantastic job by Ball State. They Stayed competitive. We're going to take a little break here, fans. We'll come right back with some more action right here on WCRH Sports. College night. Think about your needs. I need to be inspired. I need personal attention from professors who care. I need a kick in the... Ball State University, everything you need. Throughout the 1990s, Cardinal Varsity Club has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars to support Ball State student athletes in 21 sports, and their work has paid off handsomely. Among all NCAA Division I-A schools, Ball State ranks in the top 10 in athlete graduation rates and the number of GTE Academic All-Americans, a distinction no other university in Indiana can match. Cardinal Varsity Club, helping Ball State student athletes achieve on the field and in the classroom. Ball State oh, yeah. takes game one, 30 to 22 over Quincy. Of course, men's volleyball is a best of five. Spectacular job by Ball State up front. And it looks like we have some stats here. Uh, just like I was talking about how Ball State has to shut down number seven, Rob Steincooler. He's currently hitting, he's got four kills, six errors. He's hitting negative. So he's sort of in the tank and that's one of the things Ball State has succeeded in doing. And no big surprise, of course, it's Fassauer and Delgado that have led Ball State in hitting Fassauer, an amazing 800%. And no Delgado, errors, 429. Right. As right. We take, let's take a look at our first replay here. There's Fassauer on game point right there, hitting a quick shot with Shunzel setting him, dishing out the rock. And there's a look at Steinkuhler, and that's what Steinkuhler's done an awful lot of, hitting it into the defense. Has a successful block by Ball State. 
And Ball State, as we said, we're up 30 to 22 in game one. This is just an incredibly pitiful matchup here. Or pivotal, I should say, matchup. <laughs> yeah, Ball State's doing really well. Yari Delgado and Paul Fassauer. Paul Fassauer doesn't have a kill yet. He's got four kills, or I'm sorry, he does not have an error. He's got four kills. Uh, Yari at the same time has four kills, one error. He's hitting 429. And for Ball State, defensive-wise, we have Josh Hall with three and Yari also with three. I keep looking at that number six errors by Steinkohler. That's that's I, I you don't expect him to get that in the entire match. You know, you that in game one. You definitely don't expect him to do that. But the thing is, last night up against Fort Wayne, he had 12 kills, 12 errors. So it could be that he's just having an off weekend. And you know, when you're having an off weekend as an athlete, you have to find a way to play better. Either pick it up defensively. If he knows that he can't help offensively, he's got to turn it around, pick it up defensively, or do something. Because otherwise, you know, the way he's playing, he's dragging the team down, and, and this game will, this match will end up in three games with Quincy going home with a big loss. Delgado is back ready to serve as we start game two in this best of five. Ball State playing for second place and a chance to host a quarterfinal match. And there's our first kill of the second game for Paul Johnson. And the early one nothing lead by Quincy. Back to, back to serve Daniel Runa. Looks like Ball State's very confident right now. After winning the first game, you always get that confidence. Sort of pushed, set outside the pin, take it off, saves it. And, a and another, whoo, another fine, fine block. As Steinkohler once again cannot get it through that defense. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with Steinkohler, but he is in the tank right now. You know, that's his seventh error for the match. Didn't and look like he had an awful lot of effort put into that no. shot. And speaking of not enough effort, that one went right into the net. Ball goes to Quincy. And back, back for the serve for Quincy, Paul Johnson. And that serve is in. An ace. Big ace. Big ace. They thought it was going to be long. And those are those jump serves that just drop at the last second. Really hard to judge. Only the second ace of the match for Quincy. And that spike is considered in. Big kill by Tegetoff. And it's 3-2 Quincy. His presence is definitely felt on the outside when he gets set. Doug Market back to serve. Big jump serve by Market. Ready for it. And that one is in. Kruzinski with the kill. And we've got to replay this. There's a shot just outside the block. Practice ball rolls onto the court, little delay. Here's Steinkohler. Steinkohler's not having such a good night offensively. Try to oh, take that beautiful. ball up. What a job. Great shot. Nice job by Fassauer. Just out of the reach of Steinkohler. He was there, but it just went out. Take it off is now back to serve. It's 4-3 Quincy. No real momentum starting here in game two. Right now we're waiting for a little, little wet floor mop up while Tegetoff goes back to serve. Little maintenance always needed. Now this, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, this is, I was just going to comment on Tegetoff's serving style. Uh, he serves, he serves when he goes back, he goes about, about 20, 25 feet back behind the court. And when you're serving, floats him from back that far. It's really hard to judge the ball. There's a lot of float on the ball. And oh. that one's real long by Trzinski. Second straight shot that went long, and Ball State has seized the lead here in game two, 5-4. That wasn't even close. I think he was trying to get some hands, trying to hit off the block, but he just totally mishit that ball. There's another good Coming serve Coming in, and once again, Trzinski, and this is a nice dig. And the spike. Quincy possession, and the call is, they're discussing the call. Was he in the net, was it in? Nope, oh, attacker hit it into the antenna. So that's another point for Ball State. 
Yeah, Quincy's, I don't know what their, their, their passing isn't that bad, but for some reason their offense isn't in sync. That serve went long by, by Tegadoff, and it's Quincy ball once again. And once again, it's Brian Trzinski with the serve. 6-5 ball state. Big jump serve. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Just outside. That was a quick set right there to Fassauer. And Fassauer just missed the line. We're all tied up. Krasinski with a powerful serve. Oh, and trying to put it over with Keith Schunzel. And he was not successful, and Quincy recaptures the lead. Yeah, Schunzel being a left-handed setter, he has the opportunity to attack the ball on two while he's front row. Looks like he just mishit that one. or And that one is considered wow, out. No, another hitting error by Ball State. That's three in a row. Passauer hits that one a little long. It's 8-6, and it looks like Quincy is seizing control here. Looks like the table's turned on that last one. And another opportunity by Shunzel to put it over instead of setting it. Good block. Good block. Great block by Shunzel. Pareto carried it. Pareto carried it, and it's a point for Ball State. Now back to serve. It's fast out. Ike attempt. Ball State has it, and over Delgado. No, it's blocked back. Picked up by Ball State. Delgado, another, another try, and blocked back again. And point. net violation is called. Point goes to Ball State. Yari's really getting a workout there. He had the last three attempts. Blocked the first time, then picked up defensively, and then the third time tipped, and Quincy was called into the net. I so think. that's still considered a kill, regardless uh, if they're in the net or they're underneath. So Yari's starting to rack up the kills tonight. Hey, what I noticed too is that Pat Martin came into that play too. We haven't called his name yet. Pat Martin, a defensive specialist. That uh -huh. serve goes long. And it's Quincy's ball. Quincy with the serve, they're up 9-8. And it's Fernando Barreto, back to the service. Kill attempt, and that one goes long. Just outside, Good. Doug Market trying to get some hands on that one and sort of just spatch the ball outside a little bit. Makes it 10-8. Barreto with another powerful serve. Big jump serve there. And that one looked like it was just tipped over. I believe, was that, uh, was that Runa that got a hold of that? Yeah, I think Shunzel, what he tried to do, he tried to, he saw opening right behind him, tried to tip it back, and uh, looks like just a little hitting error by Shunzel. Looks like uh, that Ball State sort of settled down and uh, they don't have as much momentum as they had in the first game. They didn't get momentum. It looked like early on they, um, Early on, they stepped forward. They had the same strong presence up front that they had before. And then it looked like Quincy just started hitting around them. And now it's it's to the point that Ball State's hit some uh, hitting errors. There we just saw Paul Fassauer with a hitting error. Just missed the line. But uh, Ball State, yeah, scores 11 to eight. They've had the last, they've had four hitting errors. You know, that's four points right there. It's a good timeout for Ball State. They can get themselves a chance to limit the errors. This game is certainly not out of reach. Like I said, it's only 11 to eight. They get themselves back on track. And they can attempt to seize control of game two. And definitely Ball State does not want to lose this game. They want to keep the momentum going, hopefully win this second game and then go to third game and, and win that one. Loretta with the serve. Josh Hall picks it up. Delgado puts it over. Steinkohler. There's a little, the more, kill. a little more confidence from Steinkohler. And look at that. He looks like he's rallying. He looks like he's ready to go. That was an important kill for Quincy and for Steinkohler. And that service goes into the net. Greta with a nice string there. But that one goes into the net. And it's 12-9. And Ball State once again with the serve. And it's 
Keith Shunzel with the serve. And big, that's a point for Quincy. Big kill there. Couldn't dig that one, hit over the block. Paul Johnson, as we said in the first game, really stepped up. Strong presence up front. Served by Mann goes long. Point goes to Ball State. And it's Delgado now with the serve. Yeah, like you mentioned before, Paul Johnson, he is definitely another offensive presence for Quincy yesterday against Fort Wayne. He had seven kills, two errors, he hit 357. So if it turns out that Steinkuhler can't take the offensive load, they're gonna probably try to get Paul Johnson a little more into the game. Bruno with a serve. And knocked over. What a beautiful, beautiful. That was the most powerful spike that we've seen all night. Market unloads. Very strong, very quick shoulder that Doug Market has. Just put everything into it. Another serve for Ball State. Goes over the net. Oh, miscommunication for Quincy. And that one goes long. And it's Ball State's point. Nice try by Johnson to try to save that. As you said, it was... Miscommunication. Miscommunication, and they got it back over. Paul Johnson tried to swing to get a kill, and he just mishit that ball and flailed it outside. And Denmark. With the serve. Coming over, nice. Great dig nice by save. Delgado. And take it off, terminates with a kill. That was a great, great overall play by Ball State. They got a really good block, deflected up. Tiny in the air, Delgado picked it up and then Shunzel dished it out to off, who terminated the play and got the kill. Denmark trying to serve for the tie. Good block by Fassauer. Mark. Coming over oh. and a beautiful, beautiful shot by Doug Market. Big shot down the line. It's really hard to dig those balls and they're coming so far, so fast at you. There you saw him. Blockers were cross court. He hit it right down the line. Didn't get a chance on, from there to see Pat Martin try to dig that out. That he had no chance. It is 14 all. Put over. A sign cooler is blocked back. And that one goes out. Krasinski knocks it out, and it's a point for Ball State, and they have taken the lead. Timeout is called by Quincy. Ball State with a 15 to 14 lead as they have one, they have seized their own momentum in this game. Looks like Quincy sort of going back to the way they played in game one. In the beginning of game two, they had a lot of momentum. Ball State was making some errors. They had 11-8 lead. Now it's 15-14 Ball State. Looks like that Quincy's just sort of, they're just not here mentally with them, making a lot of mental mistakes. And it looks, it's good to see the Ball State turns it around like that. Now it's a brand new ball game. And it, when you see the replay, there's a big kill by Tegetoff. Drive shot, high off the block, out of the reach of the defender. They yeah, take it off Paul Fassauer. You gotta give him credit as well for stepping up here in the second game when the chips were down. They've come back and they've rallied to get several straight points and they've taken a one point lead here in game two. They're already up one game to nothing. Take a look at the fans that are here in attendance. They have a pretty nice crowd here tonight. Very nice crowd, yes. Live here at John Worthen Arena. We welcome all of you on this triple cast. As Ball State's ready to serve. Denmark with the serve. And Trzinski, and he can't get to it. It's another point for Ball State. Looks like he had another attack error for Quincy. Hit that one into the antenna. Makes it 16 to 14 in this rally. You know, that, go ahead, I'm sorry. Quincy, you know, they hit only 2% in the first game, and it's really showing what happens in the second game. They, they are definitely not hitting that well. And that's a key thing if Quincy wants to win, they gotta step it up offensively because Ball State a really good defensive team digging wise with Yari Delgado, Josh Hall, and uh, so they're gonna have to turn this around if they wanna win it. And Denmark serving is excellent here as well. This, this huge rally has come with him serving. Of course, that one went over the net. That's one of those sort of gimme aces that you get when it hits the net like that and sort of just trickles over. You know, you always get excited because those things don't happen that often. It didn't happen that time. 
That was a powerful serve, but it wasn't able to go through the net. 17 to 15. And Quincy once again reclaiming service. It's Paul Johnson back to serve. And that's a beautiful kill by Fassauer. And once again, Ball State with the service. Up 18-15. And back to serve is Doug Market, their leading server. Yeah, Doug Market, he is just a really good server, but not that time. As soon as we say that. <laughs> just as we say it, he makes a service error. But uh, no, for the year, Doug Market has 32 service aces. He leads Ball State by far. And um, hopefully he'll be able to get an ace tonight to Fast show us what he's capable of doing. Fassauer knocks that one. And it's 19 to 16, knocked that one right through the defense. Take it off now is back to serve. Here's take it off with that deep float serve. I mean, he's really off the court. Floats over the net, here's Truszynski and it's blocked back. There's Another try, Stein killer. And this time he gets it through the defense. And Quincy once again reclaims service. Yeah, what Quincy has to do, if they really want to get into this match, they got to make sure the setter has to set some more balls to Steinkuller, get Steinkuller into the game. Because once you get your big gun, when he starts feeling more confident, gets more kills, the team starts, there's a better team unity there. And they just feel a little better, can get more, more things working for themselves. This fast hour back to serve, up 20 to 17. That one is long, makes it 20 to 18. Playing ping pong here, back and forth we go. It's Fernando Barreto is back to serve. Big jump serve coming. Delgado with floater. Another hitting error. Another hitting error by Quincy. Yeah, Delgado, Delgado sort of tipped that over on the combination play. Quincy was there to pick it up. And uh, they had an opportuni opportunity to get another point, but just another hitting error. It just doesn't look like Quincy's in this tonight. We haven't, we haven't said Dan Runa's name too much when it comes to hitting errors. He's been pretty consistent so far today. That's 21 to 18 Ball State. There's Paul That's Johnson. That's by Johnson, but it's taken by Ball State. And Delgado, and he hits it long. Delgado try to get some hands off that, try to drive it off the fingertips of the block, but uh, looks like he just missed that one. Another hitting error by Ball State. And now here's Felix Mann. And put over by Matt Denmark. Big shot by Denmark, way to elevate up. Denmark, a very athletic player. He's the highest jumper on Ball State. I believe he touches about, uh, I don't know, 11 feet, eight inches high. He looked at least that high this time. Oh yeah. Service by Delgado, and it's knocked back, but it's knocked out of bounds. Nan Runa with the shot, but it was blocked out of bounds. And it's point for Quincy, 22 to 20. Runa now on the serve. And that one was put over by Josh Hall, and it's point for Quincy. So what do you think uh, Quincy has to do to step this around? They, they look a little tentative, they look... Uh, you know, they, they just don't, doesn't feel like they're they're playing like them usual selves. Well, we just saw right there, that serve that went into the net. They had more success when it looks like they were hitting around Ball State's defense when they tried to take him head on. It just doesn't look like they can match up power for power. And that's especially true with uh, Steinkuller being a little cold this weekend. Right. Coming in now is Lopez with the serve. And that serve goes long. Now that's the last thing you want to do. Back row specialist coming in and missing a serve, especially at 23-22. Comes up, let's take it off with a hit. It's taken by Quincy. Ooh. And a nice smack there by Dan Runa. Runa just squeezed that through the triple block at Ball State. Game tied up now at 23. Service by Johnson. Oh, and a little miscommunication there, it looked like. As Big time miscommunication. Delgado ended up with the hit. He'll get the credit for it, but uh, <laughs> that was more like a team error. And that one goes long, and it's back to Ball State. 
and we're all knotted up at 24 apiece. And it looks like Doug Market's serving, but uh, they're going to keep him down. He's not going to jump serve this time. A couple errors in the first game, and then uh, in the last one, jump serving. Oh, and it's blocked, and there was a miscommunication on the block. They could not get to it. It's a point for Ball State. Blocked it right into the net. Beautiful shot by Market. The set was a little under set, and Doug Market in the back row jumped back row and sort of tipped it over. Why do you think he's going away from the jump serve now? Well, probably could be that sometimes you're not confident if, you know, if you start. Oh! <laughs> I'll get back to that comment, Ball but that was Fassauer. just a big block. Paul Fassauer, Fassauer right in their face. Really big block that time. And watch this block, watch him get over. Oh. Just straight down. But like I was saying before, uh, Doug Market's probably not jump serving because he had uh, a couple errors uh, in the first in the first game, he missed one serve, and then he also just missed one before. So uh, probably Joel Walton said, you know, let's let's limit the errors, get some more serves in. Especially right before that, you had the back row specialist come in and miss a serve. You know, you don't want to you you don't want to have so many errors and give too many points away to the, to Quincy. You think maybe that if Ball State happens to win this game and, and go up two games to none, that maybe they'll just go ahead and let the dogs out, turn the dogs loose, and go ahead and let them I think serve so. more powerfully? Definitely, I think so. Ball State's got some really good servers and that have high aces, a lot of aces. But the thing is, at the same time, when you're jump serving, you're making a lot of errors. Let's take a look at this replay. What a, what a powerful hit. That was fast hour there on the hit. Very powerful up front, as we've been talking about all night. And it just looks like that Quincy just cannot match up power for power. Exactly. Ball State, a very physical team. Very physical team. They have a strong blocking team. And at the same time, they're quick also, good defensively. And it really helps out when you have a big block up front. You can intimidate the other, the other team a little bit. Maybe that could be why Quincy's a little scared. There's Market with the serve. And smacked over by Steinkuhler, but it's long, and it's 27 to 24 now. Another hitter, hitting error by Steinkuhler. That gives him eight hitting errors for the game, and he is just, you know, having six kills and eight errors. He is really not helping the team out. And that one is blocked out of bounds, and a point goes to Quincy. Barreto there on the offensive play. And a warning being issued. A warning to number one. Looks like there was a little, little trash talking in between the net. Reto definitely shows his emotions, that is for sure. And there's another kill. And, and there, there, there's definite trash talking going on there. But uh, Ball State usually a very clean team. They don't do that that much. Watch a replay there. Paul Fassauer hits around the block with a big kill. Oh, and no, it's considered carried. Another kill by Barreto. And it's another point for Quincy. Ball stayed two points away from winning this match. Back to serve is Brian Trzinski. Oh, that, that set went over. And that hit goes long by Runa. And it's another point for Ball State, and we've got game point. 29 to 26, crowd on their feet as Paul Fassauer back to serve for a two-game lead. Here comes a big jump serve by Fassauer. Coming up, and that one's killed out of bounds by Barreto. It's considered out of bounds. Barreto does not like to call. He is obviously visibly and upset, but the point does go to Ball State, and they take game two, and they're up two games to none. Very, 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 very angry. Very angry number one right there, Barreto. Definitely that was a kill for him. It was off the block, out of bounds. Could have been that the refs didn't see it. Obviously, Quincy really disappointed because they were sort of coming back, and uh, you know now Quincy's sort of in the hole. If you could watch a replay, Barreto up, and sort one. of hard to see on the TV, but uh, you could definitely, you could hear a touch if you're down courtside. Officials over talking to Steinkuhler right now. And Barreto definitely looks a little disappointed right now. But we, we got to take a timeout here, fans, as we're in 
our five minute break. When we come back, we'll have more here from Worthen Arena. You're watching WCRH Sports. Hello, I'm Frank Sabatine, and I'm looking for a few good teachers. Teachers who want to renew their license or complete a graduate degree. Through Ball State University School of Continuing Education and Public Service, we have everything you need to complete your studies without leaving your community. Our distance education program offers live satellite, online, or face-to-face -face courses offered at local high schools throughout the state. So call us or take a look at us on the web because Ball State University has everything you need. Okay, class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need a well-respected degree. I need to explore. I need a ticket to the world. Ball State University, everything you need. Ball State Sports Online. Schedule, result, headline, features, statistics, game notes, team pages, video and audio clip, biography, email, Ball State links, daily updates. Your only online source for all the latest in Ball State sports. www.bsu.edu slash sports. Okay class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need to express my creativity. I need help paying for college. I need activities outside of class. Ball State University, everything you need. Welcome back as we take a look at this block by Paul Fassauer. What a monster block that was. Big, just like I said before, Ball State a real big and physical team up front blocking wise. They're doing really well. Now for stats for this, after the second game, Quincy definitely not in the position where they want to be right now. They have three people hitting in negative numbers. Steinkohler with eight errors. Dan, Dan Runhau with five, and uh, number 16 with six errors. Brian Turzinski has six errors there. A number of errors, 24 errors, and, as opposed to 22 kills and, for Quincy, and the, hitting in the negative figures after two that, games. That's just what I was gonna add. The whole team is hitting negative while Ball State's hitting 264. Uh, Ball State's led by Paul Fassauer with eight kills, two errors, hitting 545. Great match for Paul Fassauer tonight. The discussion, for those of you just tuning in right before we went to break, the discussion was whether or not that last kill was in bounds or if it was out of bounds. The officials did rule it out of bounds. The officials did have a discussion, and in the middle of the discussion was uh, Rob Steinkohler, and apparently there was um, no swaying of the officials there, and there was no additional warning given. Now, keep in mind, Barreto already has a warning on him if he were to... Uh, you know, if he were to tick off the officials one more time, then uh, what exactly happens? What happens is, uh, first, uh, the ref gives you a verbal warning, like what the ref did to Barreto, the number one. He said, you know, you're talking too much or settle down. After that, the next warning, it's an automatic yellow card, and that gives Ball State an automatic point. So Barreto, at the end of that game, very, very disappointed at the call. Thought he had the, a touch on the block. If you watch the replay here, this is probably, this is that last point there. There was a definite touch off the block. It was hit out of bounds, and uh, none of the refs saw a touch, unfortunately. And there you could see Barreto really, really disappointed. Well, certainly if it had been touched, the point would have gone the other way. Now, of course, the, the ball state was several points ahead at this point. It's tough to determine whether or not that would have made any difference in game right, two. Exactly. They had game point anyway. It was 29-26, uh, and uh, 
you know, let's say if, if Quincy would have sided out on that, it would have been 29-27. And, uh, you know, Ball State would have had realistically two, two chances at game point before this, tying it up. And this was definitely a time for Tim Koff, the, the head coach of Quincy, to get his team together and to calm them down and to say, hey, you know, we're still in this. We're only yeah. down two games to none. Let's not get too frustrated right now or this one could be over real quick. Definitely. I think the way this match is going, we're going to see Ball State win in three because, uh, you know, Quincy's definitely not not in this match mentally nor physically. I, I think there may be a little fatigue from last night's match from big road trip coming from, from Quincy. Then, you, you know, you drive up to Fort Wayne and then and then tonight you're playing here at Ball State. And, and that sort of has a toll on you when you're when you're on a travel weekend. We'll have to see last night, of course, Ball State suffered in game three, but we are underway here in game three. And the first point goes to Ball State on the kill by Matt Denmark. Ball State getting the first point and right away, they're up one to nothing. And I think Ball State probably wants to get this over with real fast. There's a serve. And there's the kill by Barreto. That's what he was looking for. Still highly emotional as we're one up. Definitely. Looks like Quincy, they got a little spark from that last uh, last call that Ball State got. And that was a block out of bounds, a shot by Fassauer, and it's two to one. And that's exactly what Quincy needs. They need to take that energy that they got at the end of the second game and turn it into momentum and channel it just right. And that was what Tim Koth's job was. Exactly, just like that was a big error. And then, uh, you know, he, it maybe did decide it was a hitting error that ended game two, but obviously how how mad and angry the whole Quincy team was, you could see that they were uh, that they're using that energy in the start of the third game. And there you see Barreto just tipping it over into the... That's two kills already for Barreto as we're back in play. Quincy with a shot and a nice dig by Market. Market hits it over and Quincy has it. And that shot goes long by Runa, and it's Ball State's point. Runa hitting in the negative figures. That's another notch one down, another hitting error. He's got four kills, six errors. Quincy, just for some reason, not offensively doing their job as they've been doing all season. And, uh, you know, hitting negative, you're not going to win a match. As you can see, there's another hitting error. Trzynski hitting it long that time. He's still in the negative figures. In fact, that's his seventh error. And that one hits the back of Delgado. The point goes to Quincy. That's bad when you can't, can't even get over the net, but you actually hit your own player. Yeah, well, sometimes you do that just to wake the other player up. If you think he's sleeping, you... Well, that may have woken up Delgado a little too much. As that, <laughs> that spike went long, and it's four all. Back to serve once again is Runa. Little floating serve. And Delgado with the spike and unable to defend it. And it's 5-4 Ball State. Big kill. That's what usually Keith Shunzel does. He sets a player, and if you make an error, next play back, he'll come right back at you to keep the confidence. So definitely, Yari got the kill there. Keeps your confidence in the game. Ah, oh, defended. Nice shot Big. by Weindell. Or excuse me, by Paul Johnson, but it's Big block. Locked there. right back into his face. Real big block. Looked like it knocked right off of man's head. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to hit through a triple block, Ball State's triple block, so they're going to have to find other options if they want to win this. And there's another block, but it's saved. Free ball coming over for Ball State. Outside and of Yari, the kill, puts Del it away. Gato with another kill. And it's 7 4. Powerful defense, that triple block that you brought out. That's worked twice already in this game. And now it's fast hour on the serve. Goes over. And it's set over. Big. And the monster kill by Matt Denmark. The big bomber. That's what they call Denmark, the big bomber. Because he can just elevate and unload. Well, that's about the third time we've seen that tonight. Couldn't come at a better time as it's now eight to four. And 
Put over by Runa. Oh, great hustle and by Take It Off. Great hustle. Off court pursuit. Let's see Ball State can terminate. And a nice Easy play again. Oh, oh. Right over. Keith Chunzo oh, what a putback. What a great all round play by Ball State. First, a high deflection, take it off, running off, picking the dig up, then getting another deflection from the block. Easy, easy dig for take it off, and then uh, Shunzel sort of does a little tip over the net. The defense wasn't expecting it. Nobody around, nobody expecting it. That's the best time to tip the ball. That's about the fourth time he's tried that here tonight, but that was by far the most effective. And a timeout is being called by Quincy, as Ball State definitely has momentum. They definitely do, and the way, and the way Quincy's playing right now, they, I, I don't know, if you're the, if you're the coach, what, what, you know, what do you say to the team? You tell them, well, we're, we're hitting bad, they're, obviously they're hitting negative. They can't find the court, they're getting blocked. Ball State's playing really good defense, but you know, what, do you, what do you tell them in this situation, Bill? Well, you know, it's a combination. As we take a look at this monster spike here by Delgado, you got to think it's a combination of poor hitting as well as great defense by Ball State. I mean, they have just come up to the net and they have attacked the net the, the whole night. Another look at that spike. They've just, they've attacked the net the whole night. And you have to, you have to try to avoid those people somehow. And they have to come up with a solution. If they don't come up with a solution soon, it's going to be over. Yeah, and, and they got to do it now. There you see Paul. Oh, the big block. Went right Bounced off of Felix Mann's head. Off the setter's head. And Ball State to serve. Paul Fassauer once again. This is the second rally that he's been a part of as, at serve. He's got a really good serve. And just as I say that, there's another service error. And that's, <laughs> and that's the second time that we've jinxed the servers here tonight. I think from now on we won't say anything until they serve, but... Uh, I guess that's how it is. You know, you serve really well, and then uh, when the commentators say, oh, he's a good server, he oh, makes an error. Nice nice recovery by Quincy. Just put over by Steinkuhler, oh. and he can't rescue it. Great Paul dig. Johnson tried to rescue it. Great dig from Tegedoff. The ball was sort of shooting over the net. I don't think Paul Johnson had enough time to turn around, and uh, he tried to sort of tip that back over, but uh, just mishit it, and he went into the net. Sometimes it's better to be lucky and, than good, and it looked like that's oh, the case that time. Definitely. Another and one. another shot into the net. And Ball State has full control. Now back to serve, Keith Schunzel. And another block. That time, that time was a combination of Denmark and Delgado. And Denmark puts it over and another kill. Free ball came over and uh, you know when you get those free balls coming over, Ball State has the opportunity to run offense. Josh Hall passed it up to Shunzel and uh, they gave it to the big bomber who just terminated the play. And it looks like they're just mopping up a little moisture on the court. Quincy looking very, very tired out there. I think exactly yeah. what you said, Dinas. I think that the fact that they were on the road yesterday through today, and it looks like it's finally wearing on them. And, and when you're playing and when you're tired and fatigued, it's really hard, it's really hard to find a way to get more emotion, more energy to come. Here's Delgado, and it's blocked out of bounds, and another point for Ball State. Delgado, the Puerto Rican machine tonight, getting kills left and right. Boy, as he stepped it up here in the third game. You know, the first game he was a presence, but he has really stepped it up here in game three. Yeah, there you see a little replay. Delgado hit it off the block out of bounds. And back to live action. That's what you didn't see with Shunzel serving it into the net. 13 to 6. You didn't need to see that. And Paul, that. <laughs> and Paul Johnson with the serve. Johnson with a powerful serve. And a nice kill by Doug Market. And Ball State once again with control. Market, as we mentioned, the leading server. He's a presence on offense as well. Definitely. He is he is by far, I think he's one of the strongest attackers Ball State has. With him is uh it's either you're there, if you're trying to dig him, you're either there and you get hit, or you can't get it because the ball comes too fast. Stein Curler gets another kill. That's only his seventh of the night. And Felix Mann on the serve, and he serves it into the net. About the third time he's done that. And it's 15 to seven, Ball State. And we have another timeout. 
Ball State once again. They've just seized control. It's 15 to seven actually is the score. Ball State once again with full control. Yeah, I think Ball State's really uh, stepped it, turned around. They've been playing really good all match, but uh, you know, it's sort of Quincy that's making all the errors. There you see Doug Market with a big cannon putting it down. Doug Market, as you mentioned, he is very, very powerful up front. You know, he's, he's one of the team leaders in kills. He's also one of the team leaders in digs, which, you know, makes him very powerful on defense, obviously. And, of course, we also mentioned he's the top server. He's just one of the best all-around players. Yeah, Doug Market's a great overall overall player. He's, he's good at everything, but, um, as you said, it stands out in his serving and his, in his attacking. It's just very powerful, and it's, uh, it's really hard to, hard to block him when he's swinging full force. Matt Denmark now is back to serve. Denmark coming into this game was the team leader in shooting percentage, or hitting percentage. Denmark had a big night last night against Loyola, had 11 kills, hit 409. And uh, you know, when Denmark's in the game, it's really hard for the opposition to stop him and stop Ball State win. And that's really what you're looking for. You know, it's coming towards the end of the conference, and uh, oh, another block there. You want Ball State to play the best that it can, and they just can't get that block that time, as it looked like it was one on one. They had Fast Hour and Delgado back there for the two on one, but they could not stop him one on one. It's 15 to eight. And there with the quick kill was Fast Hour. Shunzel's finding a way, definitely had to dish the rock out to everybody. Sent Fast Hour, Market, Delgado, take it off all the guys. Shunzel doing a really good job on mixing up the offense tonight. Market. Keeps Quincy blockers guessing all the time. Market, another long serve. He's had a number of service errors here tonight. 16 to nine. Barreto back for the serve. Oh, and another little put, put back by Shunzel. A little bit unexpected, the setter tip, that always works. I noticed there are some hand gestures that we're seeing. What do some of these mean? Uh, what they're doing is usually the, the setter, uh, for example, for Ball State, Keith Shunzel, before each play, before they receive the serve, they'll, he'll give a hand signal. And what that does is uh, that tells what offense they're going to run. It's just sort of like football or any other sport. You have a set run that you'll do. And uh, instead of having a huddle right here, he'll just put out some fingers and and each person has a certain certain offensive scheme that they're gonna run. And there was a put down by Fast Hour and it, that makes it 19 to nine. Back row blocker right there, the setter's back row. Fast Hour's also and, steps it up here. And we third. have a yellow card right now. Yellow card to number 13. It's being issued against Runa. Rune obviously very disappointed. It, uh, I guess what happened, there was a little trash talking in between the net and Runa kicked the ball uh, into Keith Shunzel. So yet another warning and it, it just, uh, that, and, it, and it's considered a yellow card, so it's another point. Makes it 20 to nine. And Ball State no holds bar right now. They are just. Good defense. And another kill by Fassauer. They and, are, and right now it looks like Ball State and Quincy are in two different leagues. Oh, definitely. It looks like Quincy should be bumped down to Division Three or NAIA because, as you can see, look at this replay. Paul up in the air, getting up. Blockers late to block, gets the kill. And, and you know, this match is pretty much, you could say it's over. Quincy's just not doing the job. Uh, block, but that time the block goes out of bounds. Fassauer and Delgado there on the double block, but it goes out of bounds. Point goes to Quincy. 21 to 10. Runa is back for the serve. And we're going to have a substitution first. As coming in is Felix Mann. And he's come in to substitute for Jeff Fischel. Runa back to serve. Here comes Delgado, puts it over. Beautiful put back. What a great shot. A little miscommunication on who was supposed to attack the ball, but uh, Delgado sort of took it and just sort of tipped it over. The net saw the opening and uh, another kill. Ball stayed up by 12 points in the third game. But that miscommunication, well, that, that shows me, Dinah, that it looks like that Quincy is just, they're just not into this anymore. 
Definitely. I, I think it was over after the second game, you could say that, because they're they're just they're dig. not mentally there. There's a big dig, dig. By, by Runa. Puts big, it big. over. And a spike attempt. Oh, and nice put over. And uh, there's the kill. There's the big Matt bomber. Denmark. The big bomber up front again. Matt Denmark was all over that, and you can just tell. Quincy with, he some, is great, ready. Quincy with some great defensive plays, but uh, looks like they're just wearing down. Well, I'll say it looks like they've got their second win here as they just, I mean, I mean, look at the power in this. There you go. You could see Denmark elevating up. Excited. You could tell when Ball State's playing good. Everyone's happy, everyone's excited. And, and you could sort of see on the faces of the players, Ball State feels confident, they look good. Quincy looks a little little shy, a little timid at times. And uh, you know, that, that, that shows on the stats as well, hitting negative. They're, uh, their big bomber, uh, number seven, Rob Steinkohler, he is not doing performing tonight. And now here's Fassauer, who he's been serving very, very well so far tonight. Oh, and he got it in that time. That was good. And there's a beautiful kill by Paul Johnson. Quincy trying to do anything they can to seize momentum, and Johnson wanting to help out. 23 to 11. And now back to serve is Stefan Sostrom. First time we've mentioned his name tonight. And they oh, got him with a big kill. Oh, the big combination. Great play. You run those combinations to keep the, the guessers block, the blockers guessing on the other side. And uh, obviously the blockers jump with the wrong guy. And uh, Delgado had that open shot. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful dig by Josh Howell. And that shot goes long. And Ball State gets that point. You got to credit Actually, that one, though, to... Ball State was in the net on that one, so uh, they didn't get the point. They did not get the point. Well, that doesn't take away the play of Josh Hall. That was a beautiful dig. Definitely. Josh Hall, very quick, too. He's been their libero, and uh, that's why he wears that red shirt, to, uh, so you know who's the difference for uh, the back row specialist. And a little put over by Denmark. Taken by Quincy. Oh, nice shot. Nice up. Nice. They're going to put it up for Market, and, and Market hits it long. Market just outside. Great set by Yari Delgado. Yari, the all-purpose player, he could do anything pretty much. Uh, had the opportunity to set there, and Doug Market just hit it just a little bit outside. You know, that monster kill by Paul Johnson may have sort of rekindled the fire here in Quincy. It looks like they're trying to take momentum back. Maybe too little too late. It's hard to tell. It's 24 to 13. Johnson to serve. Yari Delgado, great off, great pursuit. Nice rescue, and block right back. And once again, it's Matt Denmark, right there along with Doug Market. Barreto just got housed on that one. He's not having a good night tonight, just like the rest of the Quincy offense. He sort of assumed that after losing three straight in Fort Wayne, they'd sort of want to regather everything and come into Ball State and play better, but they are just not. And another, another block by the combination of Market and Denmark. The big bomber up there blocking too. And you know, you gotta think, you mentioned before, if Steinkuhler does not step up, that someone else needs to, and it just doesn't look like anybody has stepped up for Quincy. 26 to 13. Yeah, you, got you, it you could tell Steinkohler is playing so bad that uh, they actually subbed him out. He's on the bench right now. And, uh, you know, the coach trying to get something going, bringing in some new subs. Or, but it's just, I think it's a little too late. Ball State four points away. And a little, little trash talking there by <laughs> Matt Denmark as well, that one got... Uh, that one got blocked right back into him. A little pointing fingers, but uh, that's all in the love of the game of volleyball. These are two teams. Two points for Ball State. Now, these are two teams very familiar with each other, of course. This is their uh, second time that they met. And we got the big sub coming in, senior night. Winchester. Here he comes. Number 15, Brian Winchester, who's coming in. He's going to be blocking middle. Let's see what he can do. His last regular season home game, fans on their feet for him. 
Good nice deflection by Winchester for oh, the kill. Puts it in oh. though. <laughs> nice kill attempt. Block back. Another shot. Oh! Big block by Winchester and Doug Market. Runa trying. Once again, that was his, looked like his third shot attempt of that play, but it was blocked back at him. Winchester's only played six games the whole season, but uh, he he loves to come in when he does. He's very aggressive. Well, he's in the Another deflection, now. great deflection by Winchester. And, and that's a point for Quincy. Lift call on Winchester. 28 to 16. And, and there we get a shot of Steinkuhler, who's once again very, sitting on the bench. Very disappointed with his play tonight. And oh, nice little put over by Tegenhoff, but rescued by Quincy. Spike attempt, oh. and it's just out of bounds. Just out of bounds by Winchester. Could not finish that one off. It's 28 to 17. Nice try by Winchester. There's the serve. And this time it was Doug Market with the try. Another block. Looks like Quincy is making a little comeback, but uh, Ball State only two points away from match. One point away from match point. 28 to 18 here as the set. Coming up and the monster spike by Tegenoff and it's a point for Ball State. And 29 to 18 and this is match point, folks. It's 29-18, the fans are on their you feet. This is a huge win here. for a chance to go to 10-4 and four in conference play. Here it is. It's and the kill. Winchester, Winchester with the kill. This is playing his last game here at home. Gets the kill last and gets the win for Ball State. Last home game, gets a last kill. And it was senior night, way to end everything for him. I'm sure he feels happy now, just like the rest of the Ball State team, going 10 and four in the conference. They got two games left on the road next weekend on, uh, to Finley and then IPFW. Huge, huge win, as you mentioned, for Ball State. As, as of this very moment, Ball State is all alone in second place at 10 and four. We have yet to hear the results of Ohio State against Mercyhurst, but there you see the final score, 30 to 22, 30 to 26, and 30 to 18. Ball State winning. We're going to go ahead and take a commercial break. And we, we have lots more coming up right here as we look at the final shot by Winchester. You're watching Ball State Volleyball on WCRH Sports. Hello, I'm Frank Sabatine, and I'm looking for a few good teachers. Teachers who want to renew their license or complete a graduate degree. Through Ball State University, Continuing education and public service, we have everything you need to complete your studies without leaving your community. Our distance education program offers live satellite, online, or face-to-face -face courses offered at local high schools throughout the state. So call us or take a look at us on the web because Ball State University has everything you need. Okay, class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need a well-respected degree. I need to explore. I need a ticket to the world. Ball State University, everything you need. Ball State Sports Online. Schedule, result, headline, features, statistic, game note, team pages, video and audio clip, biography, email, Ball State link, daily updates. Your only online source for all the latest in Ball State sports. www.bsu.edu slash sports. Okay class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need to express my creativity. I need help paying for college. I need activities outside of class. 
Welcome back here to WCRH Sports as Ball State getting the three game straight victory. Bill Davis here along with Dinas Madison. Fantastic job here by the Ball State Cardinals. We are joined here by Ball State head coach and we welcome you here to our broadcast. First of all, please talk about um, Paul Fassauer had a, did a fantastic job here tonight. He had 12 kills and he only had two errors. Talk about the, the offensive presence he had here and his importance here on the team. Well, Paul's been real consistent for us all season long. Uh, he, he and Matt are really uh, the biggest offensive weapons that our team has. But to work balls to the middle, uh, it, it's not just those guys driving every time. We have to pass the ball up to this target. We have to get the ball to our setter. And then Keith has to put the ball in the right location. So uh, it's whenever your middles are hitting well and, and hitting uh, a lot of kills as well as a high percentage, it's a team effort to get that done. Let me ask you a question also, Joel. How do you feel you have two games left in the MEVA Conference against Finley next weekend and then also IPFW, and that'll wrap up the regular season. How do you feel going into the MEVA Conference tournament uh, the way the team's been playing so far? Well, I think here late in the season we've been making a really nice run. We've been playing uh, more consistently, and, and the amazing thing is some of the matches that we've been winning, I feel we've been winning ugly. Uh, you know, my, my goal, we, we've got two matches next week. We've got to be ready to play those matches. Uh, IPFW has been playing a lot better here toward the end of the season. They've had a lot of home matches, and they're on a bit of a run. So it's not going to be easy, but uh, what we want to do is get through next weekend and then get our guys nice and rested and ready to go for the conference tournament. That's going to be when, uh, when it's go time and when everything's the most important. Coach, it looked like no one really stepped up offensively for Quincy in this game, and that's in part, I'm sure, due to the fantastic defensive play that you guys had here tonight. Um, how, how important do you think that, it's, it, that it is for Ball State to continue this defensive momentum going through the end of the season? Well, you know, our team has all season long been a great defensive team. We've been able to hold people to low hitting percentages. Uh, we want to continue that. And don't get me wrong, and we'll continue to practice that area of the game. But for our team to really excel, we have to continue to improve offensively. And we've got to get to the point where every match, every game, we're hitting over 300. Uh, you know, tonight we, we had – a game, game number two, where we kind of fell off, and a big part of that was our offense. We just started making a lot of attack errors. We were attacking balls out of bounds, and not necessarily because of what Quincy was doing, but just balls weren't set quite in the right location. Balls weren't passed to our setter, uh, and attackers tried to do too much. So defense is the strength of our team. Uh, for us to really click and finish down the stretch, we've got to get our offense going. I have another question. Uh, why don't you talk about or tell us a little about your preparation for the upcoming next weekend against Finley and Fort Wayne, because obviously these are very two important matches. Mm -hmm. uh, you're 10 and four, Ball State's 10 and four in the MEVA Conference, and potentially with those two big wins can move up to 12 and four and, and secure the second place in the MEVA Conference. So uh, what, what's gonna be the preparation this week for the upcoming weekend? Well, just like we've done all season long, we're gonna have to take it one match at a time. Uh, because Finley is a first year team, even though we, we play them on Friday, we, we may actually change our focus a little bit this weekend so that uh, we're gearing up for IPFW the second night. You know, we will put together a game plan for Finley. We'll give our guys a lot of information, uh, but it is going to actually end up being a dual week where our focus has, has really got to be primarily on IPFW. Uh, that's the match that's going to be a lot tougher uh, they have a couple very exceptional players in Jeff Patak, and then uh, actually both of their middles are, are pretty sound. So our, our guys have to be prepared. That, that's the bottom line. We, <laughs> we've got those two matches, and then whatever comes our way in the tournament. And, and the way that the MIVA regular season is playing out right now, Dynas, we have no idea who we're going to end up playing in that right. first round. Coach, once again, we congratulate you on a wonderful win here. Three straight games. Thanks, Fantastic Bill. Fantastic job. You're in second place right now, as it stands right this very second, and got a lot of momentum going into the tournament. That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be coming right back here on WCRH Sports. We've got a lot more coming up.
Okay, class, tomorrow night's college night. Think about your needs. I need to be inspired. I need personal attention from professors who care. I need a kick in the... Throughout the 1990s, Cardinal Varsity Club has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars to support Ball State student-athletes in 21 sports, and their work has paid off handsomely. Among all NCAA Division I-A schools, Ball State ranks in the top 10 in athlete graduation rates and the number of GTE Academic All-Americans, a distinction no other university in Indiana can match. Cardinal Varsity Club, helping Ball State student-athletes achieve on the field and in the classroom. Welcome back here to Worthen Arena. Ball State beating Quincy in three straight games, 30-22, 30-26, and 30-18. Bill Davis here once again along with Dinus Madison. Fantastic win for Ball State as they are now all alone in second place. And depending on what Ohio State does, whether they'll be all alone or tied as of the end of this night. Fantastic job by Ohio State, particularly defensively, Dinus. Ball State played all around really well. I think they, they blocked really well. They served really well. And uh, their offense was, was just unbelievable. Quincy had no, no way of stopping them. At the same time, Quincy had a lot of hitting errors. They hit negative 3% as a team. And hitting negative, you're not going to win matches on the road like that. And as the coach mentioned, they, Ball State has to hit better than 300 if they want to win. And they did hit 318 for the entire game. Fantastic job offensively, defensively, all around, in particularly in game three. Um, definitely, you know, you have to think that Ball State faltered a lot lately in game three. They really stepped it up this time. They did a real job. As you, if you look through the season, usually if, if they win the first two games, third game they sort of a little let down because they feel confident that they have the game and the, I'm sorry, that the match. But uh, they did a really good job today. They won the first two games and, uh, you know, they came out real strong in the third game. And it was a really good job to see that they could finish the match and uh, in the quick three games and, you know, as, as the scores show that it was pretty much a big blowout in the third game too, winning 30 to 18. Holding Stein Cooler down to negative 048 hitting percentage has to be a huge key. In fact, as we're looking at this here, there were four Quincy players that were in the negative figures all night. And when you, when you hold an offense down to negative figures, you've got to think you've got, it's, it's more than just poor play and offense, that you've got to have a powerful defense. Very well, that you're right, Bill. Uh, Ball State has a really good defensive scheme. I think a big thing about why Quincy was playing so bad, like what we talked about tonight, you know, they were on a road trip, big weekend. They were just up in Fort Wayne last weekend, and or last night they lost in three, and I think that the, that the road has just taken toll on them physically, mentally, and as you could see, that the team just didn't look like they were there tonight. Well, we certainly hope that you have enjoyed this broadcast here on WCRH Sports. I know that I have. Uh, for Dynas Madison, I'm Bill Davis. Ball State Cardinals once again winning in three straight games over Quincy. WCRH Sports, fantastic, fa fantastic job by Ball State. We're going to sign off right now. For Dynas, once again, I'm Bill. We'll see you later for WCRH Sports.